Kirk Shireman, International Space Station Deputy Program Manager here in Baikonur. Uh, Kirk, yesterday the Soyuz was in several segments, already vertical, ready for launch on Thursday. Your thoughts as you watched uh, the vehicle roll to the pad today? Uh, it's always amazing to be here and see how this production works uh, from, like you said, from pieces to having the shroud on to having it made it in the vehicle and come out in just a matter of uh, less than 10 minutes. It's vertical and, uh, and the crews are already attaching the, uh, the uh, launch towers to the rocket. So it's amazing uh, uh, production they have here. Very efficient, very reliable. So it's great to, uh, great to be here and great to witness this uh, effort. Even as Discovery is still docked to the International Space Station, still conducting the STS-119-15A mission, uh, another vehicle about to head to the space station, a busy traffic pattern in orbit. Uh, how, how has this all been choreographed very carefully, very closely, so that one vehicle follows the other? Yeah, it's, uh, I think this is really our future. We're doing it uh, in this particular mission. We had some delays uh, in making sure everything was right for the shuttle launch, and in fact, uh, uh, getting the last hydrogen leak fixed, uh, which put this shuttle very close to the Soyuz. Uh, we worked the details. In fact, we had a number of options depending on what day the shuttle launched and, and how much of the 15A-119 uh, mission we'd have to, to cut off if we needed to to get these flights in in this time frame. Uh, I think that's really going to be our future. So uh, today we talked about shuttle and Soyuz, but in the future it'll be HTVs, ATVs, Progresses, Soyuzes, uh, shuttles, uh, and, and so our uh, CRS cargo resupply vehicles. So we're looking forward to this for future. It's a great learning experience, and, and again, it's good for, for uh, our ops teams here in the U.S. and in, uh, and in Russia to uh, learn how to work through these kinds of issues. Gennady Padalka soon to become the first person to command a space station twice now, and Mike Barrett, no stranger to Russian operations, about to embark on his first flight. How complicated will this increment be sort of as a bridge to the inauguration of six-person crew coming up in the spring? So I think that's the that's the key. These, these guys are going to be up there for a few months until May, uh, with the crew of three getting uh, the space station ready. The final checkouts on all the uh, on the new cargo, the new uh, hardware we brought up to support six-person crew, uh, and then we'll have the six people on board, and that's a new way of life for all of us. And so it'll be interesting to uh, to work through the issues that we'll have uh, again uh, to have have uh, uh, the the crews and what tasks they'll be doing and how they work together, and and, it, and then the strain on the overall system both on board all the, uh, the environmental control and life support systems and so on, but also on the ground support systems and making sure all the, the planning and activities go as, the, as they need to and as efficiently. So it's a very learning, uh, big learning experience for us. It'll be a learning experience for the guys on board and a very ex exciting time for the ISS. The other unique thing about this particular increment is when we go to six-person crew in May, these guys will be on board and we'll have for the, for the uh, one, first time and perhaps the only time in the ISS program, we'll have one member from, uh, from uh, each of the partners on board the ISS at a single time. So uh, a truly international uh, program, and, and it'll be visually obvious to folks when, uh, when we see all the different flags for all the different crew members on board. And finally, state of the station. You're up to full power, all the arrays out and running, a urine processor assembly that uh, appears to be in good shape now in its early uh, phase of the new distillation assembly checkout. Uh, how has the state of the station been left now uh, with Discovery soon to depart? Uh, the station's in great shape. We're very excited about having the new solar arrays there. Um, the, uh, the urine processor, we went through the first wet cycle uh, yesterday, and it ran for about four hours very successfully. Of course, uh, we'll be testing it uh, continually here over the, over the weeks coming before we uh, launch uh, the six-person crew. So uh, again, the space station couldn't be in better shape. We're very, uh, very pleased with uh, how things are going. Uh, there's a few activities left to remain between now and, and, uh, and launching the six-person crew. And, and uh, Gerardi and Mike Barrett uh, uh, and Koichi Wakata will be taking care of those last final activities and will be in great shape. So, uh, again, it's a, a very exciting time for the International Space Station, and we're really looking forward to this expedition. Mike Lopez Alegria, Expedition 14 Commander, now Acting Director of Flight Crew Operations for ISS Operations. Mike, uh, always an amazing sight on the pad that Yuri Gagarin was launched into the history books from almost 48 years ago. Your thoughts as you watched Mike Barrett's vehicle roll to the pad today? It's just a spectacular evolution. I actually haven't seen one myself and uh, seeing it for the first time even though I've heard descriptions of it. It's, um, it's an amazing feat that they pulled off so seamlessly and so quickly, efficiently. Very impressive.
How's Mike doing? Uh, what's his level of preparedness for his maiden flight into space and on Thursday? Well, Mike's a consummate professional, and I have no doubt he's ready to go. We saw him briefly yesterday, and uh, he looked well. He looked fit. He looked happy. He looked relaxed. So I think it's all good. From your personal experience, uh, how relaxed or intense are these final couple of days before launch day when uh, you go through the ceremonial trappings of the Cosmonaut Hotel and then come here for suit up? Well, as you know, we spend almost two weeks down here typically before uh, L-3 when the families arrive and, and th that period is actually quite relaxed. We have a couple of fit checks uh, at building 254 and, and uh, at the vehicle. Um, aside from that, there's not much training. It's, it's time to wind down and sort of take a deep breath and take, uh, take everything in. When the families get here, it's a, it's a little bit more increased pace. And of course, as you get closer and closer, your body tells you something important is about to happen. But in general, it's pretty relaxed. They, they do a really nice job of uh, keeping the crew isolated from most of the daily grind. How complicated has it been from a flight crew operations perspective with the STS-119 mission dovetailing right into the Soyuz launch, the training of the crews, uh, all of the preparedness uh, to try to fold all of this choreography together? I think from a crew standpoint, it hasn't been terribly different. You know, the shuttle crew obviously is training for their shuttle flight, the station crew is training for their station flights. and. Uh, it, I think the, the difficulty lies with the ops team and program management to try to make everything work together in the sequence necessary. The crews just adapt and they're ready to go whenever they say, get in the vehicle, it's time, then you know we're ready. Every crew has its own personality. Uh, Gennady Padalka returning uh, for the first time. Uh, we'll see a, 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 an individual as a commander for a second time on the space station, and he's joined by Mike Barrett, no stranger to Russian operations. How do you think uh, this increment stacks up in terms of its complexity uh, serving as a bridge into six-person crew that is expected to be inaugurated later in the spring? Well, these guys are both pros. Uh, as you say, Mike has been here to Russia quite a lot before, first as a flight surgeon, uh, and so he is, I think he's uniquely qualified to be part of this crew. And, and Gennady, of course, everybody really respects his professionalism. Uh, I think the, the interesting part will be, as you say, the transition to six crew, and, and a lot of that's going to rest on Gennady's shoulder as a commander to try to uh, make sure that the uh, disparate interests of all the different control centers for interest, for instance, are not uh, reflected on, in the crew's daily operations. We want to maintain the fact that it's one crew operating one space station, and, and I think the ground teams are prepared for that by making the timelines uh, satisfy all the requirements for all the different partners while keeping the crew as one. And in a, just a few months, another Soyuz will be on the same pad with Frank DeWinna of the European Space Agency, Bob Thursk of the Canadian Space Agency, all the partners soon to be represented at the same time up on the space station. How do you think this is all going to fold together? How, how is this, this stew, this blend of personalities, nationalities, cultures going to come together to fulfill the true dream of space station? Well, it's pretty interesting. As different as uh, our cultures may be, I think the fact that we're all cosmonauts and astronauts uh, is a, a very uniting force. And we tend to think very almost strikingly similarly about a lot of things. So I, I anticipate the wrinkles will be ironed out on the ground before they ever get on board and uh, the crew will work together seamlessly. Should be an enriching experience. That's, that's not to say it won't be complicated and there won't be some uh, you know, problems that we have to work through. Anytime we go from something that we've been doing now for several years, that is a crew of three, to a crew of six, there'll be, there'll be challenges. But uh, I, I think we're in as good a posture as you could expect right now. Mike, a final question. You sat on top of that Soyuz rocket just a couple of years ago to begin your half year in space on the space station as a commander. Uh, when you look at this, when you look at the shuttles, when you look at this traffic pattern and the multinational uh, aspect of what we're doing, uh, what would you say is the legacy of International Space Station already, even before it's fully completed? I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, certainly, we have a lot of uh, a lot technically to be proud of, and I think over time, scientifically, we'll have a legacy as well. But probably the biggest uh, thing that we'll be able to point to in the future is how the international cooperation has really um, pulled together, and I think it's symbolic for kind of a united, not people, but peoples, as we're 
going forward in space as a human uh, spacefaring uh, endeavor. So uh, I, I think it's the international aspect of it that's the most important legacy that the ISS will leave.